Hi, it's Lipstick Out. Thanks so much for watching today. I wanted to do a video where I'm trying the new rougher brushes I purchased. Now, this brand may not be new to you, but it's new to me. And I only recently tried one because it was sent as a gift. I got their number five brush when I made a purchase from M Cosmetics, and M included this brush as the perfect brush to apply their new bronzer with. And I was like, wow. It's just like little baby angel hair wings. I love this. And so the minute I tried this, I think it was two days later, I made this purchase. <laughs> so here's where I tell you, I have heard about Ruffer for years. I'm gonna throw some powder on today, but I'm gonna use the number five brush that I had been using for bronzer. I'm using a different brush today for bronzer. Um, I'd heard about Ruffer for years. I remember seeing reviews from beauty YouTubers that I know and love and trust. And I just never gave myself permission to make the purchase. Now, I do have some brushes that are handmade in Japan from other brands. I have some Sonia G, I have some Wayne Goss, and they're beautiful. But every time I make a purchase, which is not very frequently, I just feel kind of like, Ugh, I don't know why. And I will walk into Sephora, um, like Nordstrom, Ulta, I'll place an order on Beautylish and spend several hundred dollars and not even bat an eyelash. But the minute I am thinking about paying $35 for one eye brush or $90 for a face brush, my little heart can't handle it. And I don't know what that's about. Because you would think that a product, if you took care of it, that would last you for years and outlive makeup items, you know, if you make the investment so in my mind, it makes sense, but somehow I just hadn't given myself permission to do it. And it's taken me years to buy the Wayne Goss brushes and years to buy the Sonia G brushes. And I don't even have all the ones I would like to have just because it is really hard for me to justify buying high-end brushes. Now, they are worth every penny. I always think of these beautiful handmade you know, natural hair brushes is an everyday luxury. So every time I pull out a Wayne Goss face brush or a Sonia G eye brush and I feel how soft it is and how beautifully it blends, I'm like, worth it, worth it. But for some reason, I just never gave myself permission to try rougher. So when this one landed in my lap unexpectedly as a gift, I was hooked absolutely hooked. When I went to the Ruffer website, I was able to enter their concept store and it's where they give you a significant percentage off their products. And all they ask is that you give them feedback based on your experience with them. And that helps them understand how people are using them, whether they're liking them, if there are any tweaks that could be made. And so I got the Essential Collection Plus, which includes three eye brushes, the number one, two, and three and then three face brushes. That includes a number four brush, and then a number 22 and a 24. I'm gonna start by bronzing my face, and I'm gonna pick up the largest brush from the set. This is the number 22. I have this bronzer from Viseart, and I've only been using this with a synthetic brush. I'm really curious to see how this brush does, but I like, like, it's so big, it actually, like, almost entirely takes up the pan. Um, but I think the reviews that I've read about this brush is that it never ends up applying too much because it's really dense and you get a really nice wash of color with it. I've been using it kind of this way. I'm curious what happens if I just turn it sideways because it is a little narrower in here. I wonder if you could use this, even though it is a large brush, for doing a little contouring because, you know, bronzer application going the wide way here and a little bit more chiseled this way. I think I'm gonna even it out, but I like that even though it's a really wide brush, if you turn it and use it this way, it really does give you a little bit more precision for such a large and chunky brush. Of course, it's super soft. Oh my goodness, love so much. You know what's funny is that I have been feeling like I was struggling to pick up product with this. Like I feel like the product is a little bit firmer packed and I was struggling to pick it up with a synthetic brush, but there's something about natural hair brushes that just do amazing things, especially with firmer packed products. So I'm going to add a little bit of bronze around my hairline. And I always do a little bit here. I don't know if I'm fooling anyone, but maybe it just makes me feel better to add a little shadow here. I 
love this brush. I have a lot of white goat hair, maybe not a lot, but I have a handful of white goat hair face brushes um, and they all feel this soft, but they're not this large. I think the next largest one I have is this guy here. This is a Wayne Goss brush, but look at the difference in size and they're equally soft and beautiful. I don't know, bigger is better. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm feeling right now. This is glorious. I have been, ever since it came in January, using this brush here from Units. This is a synthetic brush. It's also super soft um, for bronzer. But the one thing I'll tell you is, with this formula from Viseart, I was struggling to pick it up with this brush. And I feel like I picked it up beautifully and it distributes so easily with this brush. And I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time like over applying. I don't feel like that's going to be something that happens. And I tend to fall into clown territory, you know, too much cheek products on the cheeks super easily. But I feel like this brush is not going to ever put me there. It's never going to put me in that position where I feel like, oh, I over bronze or, you know, I over blush. What was I thinking? Because I can just keep adding stuff and it blends it beautifully, but it's soft. Boy, gorgeous. The next brush I'm trying is the number 22. This is one of those that, again, they say bronzer, brush, highlight, powder, whatever you want. I'm going to use it today for blush. I don't know. It might be, it might be a little big. You know what? I might, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Part of me is like, use a smaller brush. The problem I've been having with this blush duo is that this color is really intense on me. And this peach is nice, but I like a mix of them together. And I have been getting like nothing, 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 way too much. <laughs> and I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's the tool I have been using. I'm excited to try this. I now have some color here. It's a mixture of both shades. The problem I have is if I go from here to here, it can be, especially with a bright shade, it can be too much. So what I do is I pick up you know, the shades that I want, pounce it off on the back of my hand to see what the blend looks like. Okay, nice, not too much. And then I start applying. Because I have so many times discovered that I've over blushed and I enthusiastically love blush with my whole heart, but I don't wanna look like I'm living in the 80s and I don't wanna look like a clown. I don't know, maybe looking like a clown is not that bad. I feel like I got a really great application with very little effort. Um, I love the way this looks and I like that I don't have to go back for more. I also like that it's being a little bit denser. I'm not, you know, there, there are bristles to help spread it around and it doesn't look like I'm landing it in one spot and then I'm trying desperately to blend. I feel like it come, like the, the big chunky brush is really helping it look diffused and light. And even though this is not quite as large, it's, it's doing the same sort of thing. Oh, I love this. Have I been using the wrong blush brushes for years? Okay, I'm not gonna keep touching my cheeks with more blush because I don't really need it. But this is the first time I have used this and I have not felt instantaneously over blush because I bought it for this color. I love like a hot coral orangey cheek, but on my fair skin, it can be too much really quickly. And I feel like I got a nice blend where I got some pretty color but it's not too much. For highlight today, I'm using the 04. It's an angled brush. It's the smallest of the face brushes, so I'm just gonna go in here. I'm using kind of like a real soft highlight today, and I know it's soft and I wanted that. I didn't wanna have too much cheek product going on, but I do like the way that it's applying it. I would love to know if you have any rougher brushes. If you do, which are your favorites, which are the ones you reach for all the time and you can't stop yourself from like, yes, I love this brush, I use it every day. Let me know in the comments. I'm taking a minute to knock all of the excess powder, I have a towel in my lap, off of this brush and now I'm just gonna go over and buff. Even though this is a really soft highlight, this is Dandelion Twinkle from Benefit and it ends up not being too much, I really wanted a hardly there highlight look today just a little bit, not too much. So these are the brushes that came in the collection with the other large white goat hair brushes from their essential collection, expanded or whatever it's called. And then I picked this up. This is the number 21 brush. And this is um, a mix of synthetic and natural hair, but it's supposed to be good for laying down creams, for laying down liquid eyeshadows, 
for packing on metallics and that's why I got it. I wanna see what this looks like because I love sticking my finger in something. I don't always wanna stick my finger in something. I'm gonna start with the number one brush. I feel like this is the one that I, I'm gonna know exactly what to do with. And I'm gonna start with kind of like a soft neutral matte, probably this guy up here. And I'm gonna put this right in my crease. I've been very partial to Sonia G eye brushes. I have some that I really like from Wayne Goss, but I feel like the shapes I like better from Sonia G. Um, and again, I kind of fell into natural hair brushes accidentally. Um, the first one that I got was from Wayne Goss six and a half years ago when I was buying a Beautylish Lucky bag and they included one of Wayne's brushes in there. I loved it so much that I ended up buying his anniversary set. And it's when the anniversary set was all dyed goat hair. And so my brushes are all, they're all black. Love though, love them, love them, love them. And then um, I got a Sonia G brush, I don't know, maybe three years ago in a Beautylish Lucky bag. This is the Sonia G brush that I got <laughs> in my Beautylish Lucky bag. And let me tell you, this changed everything about not only how I applied my makeup, but how well my makeup blended. And all of a sudden, I felt like my eye makeup skills went from like, you know, out of one out of 10, out of five to like a six and a half, almost seven on the daily. I was like, dude, I'm obviously no pro, but this is making it look so much better. So if you're looking to kind of up your makeup game, give yourself permission to get the tools that are gonna get you there. So I'm gonna continue to put some of this on and blend. I know I'm used to the Sonia G Worker Pro and it, it tends to be my favorite crease brush, but this is a little bit longer and thinner. It's not quite as dense as the Sonia G, but it still does a beautiful job. I'm gonna put a little bit of this darker matte in the outside corner. I don't want too much, just a little bit. So I'm gonna go into the number two and I'm gonna use this shade right here. I'm just gonna do a really light wash kind of over the lid. I don't necessarily wanna pack it on really heavy. I'm also gonna take this into this metallic shade here, just kind of on the very edge of the bristles and I'm gonna run this right underneath my lower lash line. I'm trying to keep it really soft today. I don't want a really heavy look but who knows where we'll end up. <laughs> you ever say that to yourself and you're like, that was not the look I'm going for, but I love it anyway. I feel like I'm always trying to go for a softer look and it ends up more intense, but it's because I just like, one more thing, one more thing. I'm gonna use this itty bitty number three brush in the darkest shade in here. I'm gonna pick it up on the end, tap off any excess, and just kind of intensify my lash line a little bit on the bottom. Now I'm gonna go back to the number two Kind of blend it together. I don't have a pencil brush this small and for the longest time I thought I didn't like pencil brushes but maybe it was the brushes I was using. They were really big and chunky and they weren't as precise. I love this itty bitty teeny tiny precise brush so much. Okay so maybe I was going to use eyeliner. Maybe I'm going to use this. They do have some interesting eyeliner brushes on the rougher site and I might get there eventually but maybe I'll just use this to kind of smudge some dark along the lash line. Oh, I love this guy. The last thing I'm gonna do is take this number 21 brush and I'm gonna go into the lightest metallic in here. It's kind of like a soft yellow shade and just hit this right in the center of the eye, but kind of keep it just to the center. Maybe a little on the inner corner. I really like the way this turned out. I'm gonna finish up my face and I'll be right back. I really like the way that my look turned out. I feel like especially the cheek products, 
they're not too heavy. And that's what I always struggle with. I am not a makeup artist, I'm a makeup enthusiast, but I get really enthusiastic, especially about blush and bronzer. I feel like these two brushes, the 22 and the 24, made all the difference in making sure that I got a nice, without being too powerful, bronzer blush look and this is great i'm really curious to see what this is going to do if i use it like maybe for contouring if i want to place like a darker shade right here or if i want to very carefully place blush in a you know this brush is great for blush but this one's even more detail focused i i don't know i'm going to keep switching it up and see how i like to use these the best but i feel like these ones are instant value to my collection, ones that I think are going to replace other ones. This one is definitely going to replace this one. I'll still use it, but I'll probably travel with this one so I don't lose this one or have it get broken in transit. All right, so when it comes to the eye brushes, I think they're really good. Um, these are the two that I instantly liked more. Um, the number 21 and the number, yeah, the number three. So this little tiny um, pencil brush and this guy here loved these. I feel like it's not fair to judge these brushes quite yet because my expectation was that they would perform more like a Sonia Jeevy that they're the white goat hair, handmade by artisans in Japan. I was expecting more of a Wayne Goss, Sonia G moment with these and they're beautiful and they perform well, but they haven't been washed yet. And the one thing I'll tell you is the difference between this 05 brush when it arrived, it was much more you know, compact. It had more of a, a look like this where it was all, and now it's splayed out a little bit more. And I, I definitely feel like I like them a little bit better after they're washed and not quite so tight. So maybe that's gonna happen here. But my expectation was, see how thin they are? I was expecting them to be a little, a little fluffier. So like this one here, this is my Sonia G Worker Pro, but do you see how much more we're getting kind of in the middle? It's a little bit chubbier and it has more of a taper coming up here. And maybe these guys will end up that way as they get washed, but they feel very thin and flat. I don't know. And, and maybe, you know, a rougher and a Sonia G, obviously different brushes designed to do different things. This is my all time favorite. And what I should do is go and see if a rougher has a brush that's shaped like this, because I feel like this um, Worker Pro and this soft shader from the Sky Eye set are very, very similar. There's a little bit of difference or both the white goat hair. This one I haven't washed recently, um, but I feel like the shape is very similar and they do a similar type of job. The one thing that I love so much about my Sonia G eye brushes is that they're all really big and fluffy. You know, they have a lot of density to them and it makes blending go really quickly and like it's like a magic wand. I'm not saying these aren't good, they are good. I'm curious to see what they're like after they've been washed a couple of times and maybe fill out a little bit because this felt really kind of thin and I worked a little bit more than I'm used to to blending out an eyeshadow. And I know the formula, I love the Viseart formula, the mattes, the metallics, I know they blend beautifully. And I got the blend that I wanted in the long run, but I felt like I had to work a little bit harder with these guys. So if I'm thinking eye brushes, these instantly impressed me. All the face brushes impressed me, but these guys here, maybe I'm using them for the wrong thing. I'm gonna check back with you. Oh, these are so luxurious. I'm definitely gonna have to check back with you. I'm just gonna sit here and play with this brush. Um, when I've had a chance to use them for several weeks and wash them, they might end up in my um, June favorites and fails. And I'll, I'll give you kind of a more in-depth, like how has it been going? And I, right now, would I recommend them? Wholeheartedly, absolutely. If you have the budget or you're looking for brushes and you're not sure which to buy, these are beautiful. They do have an entire eye set in the concept store where you can get several brushes for 40% off. And I don't know, part of me wants to go and do that, but I'm worried I'm gonna get more of the brushes I already have. So I might just start buying them individually. But I'll tell you, I've been so impressed. I'm so grateful to M for sending me this number five brush. And I love that this has kind of been the gateway to more beautiful things. And that, that's happened with every single brush I've ever gotten. Um, the Wayne Goss brush, one that came in my Beautylish Lucky bag and I bought more. Same with the Sonia G. I love that I got this one unexpectedly and fell in love with it. So I definitely feel like if you're 
if you're kind of on the precipice, if you've been thinking about Ruffer like I had for a long time, you know, things into and out of your cart, <laughs> but you just hadn't actually done it, it's worth it. It's worth it. If you like natural hair brushes, handmade brushes in Japan, oh, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. And I, I'm glad that this ended up leading me to more of these. I would love to know if you already have a lot of rougher brushes, which are your favorite? Which are the ones that you reach for all the time? Which are the ones that you tell your friends about? This is the brush you need, it's so good. Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're one of those people like me, you've been kind of standing on the precipice of investing in some maybe expensive brushes or other makeup tools and not makeup itself, what is keeping you back? Is it the price? Is it just the unknown? You don't know what you're getting into? Let's talk about that as well. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.